Naughtiness is badness. Is there some naughtiness? Well, no, no. There is. Is None. None that we can remember. Right, off I go then. That's the one. Well, this is this here we're looking at here is Mr. John Kirkland. There's a acquaintance of mine now, possibly for um, 30 or 40 years. Right, what do you say? <laughs> oh, I can't hear. I wish you'd learn to speak English for fuck's sake. You think this common slobber come out the side of his head like that? It's hardly just very difficult to see what he's saying, isn't it? Anyway, it's on relationships like this that our great nation was built. We've staggered through generation after generation, typhoid, tuberculosis, world wars, things like that. Managed to stay together, and represent ourselves here this evening for this brief moment of reflection. Looking at the age of the waitresses and the amount of makeup they wear, we aren't going to gain too many clues about the state of things in the nation. All we can say is that waitresses do not wear makeup as yet in this country. <clears throat> Nor do they wear wigs. Right, here we have uh, Mr. Curry, Daniel Curry, it's spelled K with an H, Curry. And uh, he was, remarkably, brought up as a uh, St Kilda supporter. I'll tell a story on John's behalf. When we were all sailing at the Gippsland Lakes, and Revel spent the day deliberately sailing onto sandbanks to practice getting off sandbanks. Uh, well, mud banks. So there were various ways he'd climb up the mast and lean over, or we'd sink the dinghy. Yeah. <laughs> or row the dinghy and sink the anchor and try and winter off. But after a day of gainfully employed trying to get off mud banks, we sailed up the Tambo River. Tambo River, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was somewhat mosquito infested, I remember, because I shook my head. That's only one weekend, wasn't it, Paul? Yeah. We were together for one weekend, weren't we? <laughs> yes. That was all. <laughs> And this boy leaves him out of the car, stops the car, gets pulled, he drives the car off. I don't know, what was that horror trick? No, oh, they weren't too friendly, these boys, that day, I'll tell you. Shark at night. I remember getting left on a mud bank and he I was sailed off. Well in that absolute alcoholic oblivion, which we used to indulge a bit in at those days. It was yes. No, well, I must say, Paul, you were never an alcoholic oblivion, were you? <laughs> I don't know about that. You, Do you remember me losing my glasses overboard when a mosquito landed on my nose and I went like that? How could I forget? I went plop. And Rebel had the ingenious idea of taking off the head silk and dredging it under the boat to try and retrieve my glasses and we never did get the mud off the head silk. But it was a, very, <laughs> it was a good try, you know. <laughs> What a stupid boy I have been. I don't know if it's better if I improve or die. Being a rented head solo, it was a good idea that we did. <laughs> I think we did. Could have been the Scientologists. Because they were also interested in it at the time. They sent a young girl around to ask me if I would uh, had sex recently. There's different language on there. And all languages are changing. One of my fondest memories of Revel was the day he finally convinced me to go out yachting with him. How long ago was that? That was about uh, oh, 20 years ago. <laughs> and uh, 
we went, yes, and uh, with great intrepidation because it was a very rough day. But I felt all right because we were out amongst a lot of other yachts. Anyway, Revel as the captain, duly took us out beyond the shore. And I would say within five minutes, we had sunk. I think it was Kevin Summers and I, we had life jackets on and Revel didn't. We were so, we, uh, the boat was on, uh, capsized. You did not this time, Revel, no. The boat from the um, Brighton Yacht Club came out to see us. The rescue boat. The rescue boat. The guy yelled out, how are you going? And I, I think we are all a bit under the weather at the time. Anyway, the rescue vessel guy said, how are you going? And Revel said, oh, we're okay. And so he said, thanks, and he went back to shore. So we had to stay with the boat <laughs> as it drifted home. We tried to put it upright, but we couldn't do it. <laughs> that is the last time I ever went sailing with young Revel. How's that? Beautiful. Beautiful. Just do a bit of commentary. Now, people in later centuries may look and say, what was the cause of your attraction? You had to be alive and together on the same moment, with you? Getting in, any inkling of it at all. It was quite significant. And in England, they killed King Charles before they realised the great gift he gave them by his mere presence to take that pinnacle of authority beyond argument. It doesn't matter if the king is a goat or a rabbit, as long as he takes that office beyond electoral debate. I totally disagree with that. As you would, because you're a lawyer, and your business and a is argumentative disagreement. Staunch Republican. Your Prime Minister was named Howard. He went over to Howard land, or was a kid land, or I don't know where he went to say his name was uh, Greece. He went to Greece. And everyone who was named the same as him, Greasy, Greece or something, they all come around the same party and drank the same beer. That was kidding when he went to Ireland, he went to Galway. I only found out from my old mate, Sirry Begley. He says, if you ever travel the world, will you send me some flags back from other parts of the world? But won't, don't, don't ever, ever send me a flag to the Union of Japan because we do not like fries. So you still like them? Not much. <laughs> They're wankers. See you, Ian. All of you is wankers. Come, Pinkford. Give them everything. Give it all back. If love was peace, give it all back. We are sued the bus.
I said to this old dear room, I, I asked you actually if your house was still standing. You know the one at uh, Kitchener? Apparently it's not. Oh uh, no, it is. There. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it is, sorry. <laughs> beautiful. Timing is you know, just beautiful. And I said, Did, does she remember the mural you painted for us on the... Uh, she does, she was too young. This. No, I don't know. Oh dear. Well, some things in our life have been dishonored and some... Stained glass windows now out of your life? Out of my life? I think exactly, no. You still doing it? Um, well, recently I came in contact with two uh, ladies who were bitter enemies but sharing the same shop. And uh, I did an Adam and Eve uh, painting for one of them, and numerous window repairs, and uh, made some money. I think she, one of them I was supposed to shag her, <laughs> but her uh, husband was I got to held back a little bit, although he was a bit sort of wimpy, you know, you should have, <laughs> as you do. Yeah. You should have flattened him before he got up in the morning. Oh, no, <laughs> not, not in England, you don't do it like that. Don't do that? No, you can sort of shake hands with the old oh. I used to be in love with this young girl a long time ago, and um, she told me she didn't love me anymore, so I had to say, Goodbye when I hang up the phone. Who else would like to go out with me? And there was a little girl put up her hand straight away. Off we go. She gets pregnant. Her sister turns out to be very friendly with the man behind the camera. It's a long time ago. That's the way it is. Boys and girls are always friendly together. Do the best you can. Look after each other, treat each other nice. You're a top catch then too, Rip, actually. <laughs> Could you repeat that? No, no. <laughs> what was that? We used to call him the man from Agfa. <laughs> we were. He was too. Yeah, remember the that? The man who put the green bag tennis balls yeah. in the bag. Yeah. Oh no, the other one about where you you the whole suggested concept. Yourself. Remember when I met you? The whole concept remember that of being I... a catch is just uh, utterly hideous to me. But I'm shocked to see that you use that terminology, Dan. No, 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 no. I think it's you just did use it. But I was a wonderful. Catch. Catch. Remember that time at, at Agfa when you you got up at that sales meeting yeah. and you, you had that marketing Put the acid idea in the water. putting the acid in the film canisters. They'll get them all thinking the same way, or otherwise they will wait. <laughs> Change their attitude. Change their attitude. <laughs> and they were supposed to have the acid or something and juggle green uh, tennis balls. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just a of interest, is Agfa still around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't see them. Uh, and the old. Uh, the old the same well, it's the only film that you can get that uh, you get free tennis balls with now. <laughs> so, can you write it a hard finally? What can I remember? Come on, the fire and the bike. Revel on the bike. With the bush, he built a big. He built the big fire. The big bonfire. In the, in the backyard. Yeah. And he rode through it on his bus. He got the ram. He got the ram. Remember the ram. The ram. And but you, I don't want to remember. But word can you remember before that? He built the garage, the new garage, and he was sitting on the garage. And I was out there, and all those people were in the in the party. There were hundreds of people in the party, 
and there was about five of us out the back and here he was sitting on the garage that he built that day and it was swaying. <laughs> it, was, oh, it looked I like I was going to fall that. down. And then he built the big bonfire, put I the ramp, the bonfire with the ramp, got the bike and went pedaling like mad and, the and seat crashed straight fire. into the fire. And the seat, yeah. I was there, I was there. Do you remember? Yes, you it's, not, it's not. Don't you remember that? You were only little baby. My baby should have probably gone to bed. I remember Dad wrestling with someone on the floor, no, on the grass. Who was that? I have no idea. Some bloke from up the road. And I was sitting there and Zoran was with me and Giselle and it was dark. And we were sitting there and Dad and some person from up the road, they both had their shirts off and they were both very drunk and they were all bottling around the ground going, I think they were wrestling. What were they doing? <laughs> and who was that man? I don't know. And um, Zoran's going, what are they doing? What are they doing? And I said, um, they're sleeping, Zoran. <laughs> they're sleeping. Dad's parents. I was quite young. I didn't quite understand what was going on, but I knew enough to stop Zoran from thinking that they were fighting because he was probably about three. <laughs> Sleep in the middle of the parties, sleeping on Ace. Remember the dog? Oh, Remember Ace? Ace, Ace and, that's and, what the dog's Ace, name. Ace. 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 And Ace. Rachel and Giselle would fall asleep on Ace. That's and we'd be right. getting up at three, we'd be still awake at three o'clock in the morning, and there would be the beautiful babies sleeping on the dog. <laughs> I'm going to shift over here Actually, because I'm making them fall down. I do remember something. One morning after going out, oh, not going out, and, oh, that's me. You, you right me. Away, you going out. One morning we got up, I was older than three because we were old enough to get up by ourselves and get our own breakfast and I think we'd been trained to make cups of tea by then. Everybody go down to the milk bar for tomato juice. Hang over the queue and Yes, and, but remember, do you remember the morning that mum was sleeping on the kitchen table like this? <laughs> and dad was sleeping on the, the back two legs of his chair and his, and his feet were up on the ankles, up on the table. And he was balanced like that for God knows how long, all night. <laughs> balanced like... My mother was like, I remember it, Rachel. <laughs> Balanced on the back two legs of his chair and I wake up and I thought, that's pretty cool, you know. I wonder if they want a cup of tea. <laughs> what we want to know is what did these two beautiful girls think of their parents and their friends? <laughs> lovely. They lovely. They just... lovely. They can be more gorgeous and they can Beautiful girl should ever meet. They're gorgeous. They are beautiful. They are. They are just beautiful. Yeah, they're exquisite. But can I tell you the story about how Marianne and I were thrown out of the hotel with the babies in the pram and Actually, all the beer glasses? Oh. I'm telling you one about Marianne and I going. Marianne and I going to the University Hotel. Rachel was about two. Oh no, she would have been younger. Rachel would have only been about 15 months old and Giselle was a tiny baby in the pusher. We went into the hotel to have one drink. About three hours later, after numerous drinks, the bartender came up and suggested that we should leave because it was not nice for us to be in the hotel with two young babies. Baby. So, because we were really annoyed with him, we decided to steal the glasses from the hotel. So Giselle was in her pusher and we packed the glasses into the bottom of her pram. 
wheeled her out of the pram and as we went down the steps of the hotel, all the glasses went clunk, clunk, clunk. And the guy in the hotel said, what have you got in there? And Marianne and I turned around and went, just a baby. And he just looked at us and laughed and said, I think it's time you both went home. And so we took them home. Okay. Marianne met John Kirkland outside the Albion Hotel in Carlton. Came home and told me about this really cute person that she'd met. And did I want to meet him? But she thought that he was the person for her. Where is he? He's gone. He He's gone? not here. He's gone. And she said, come down and meet him. So I went down. She introduced us and we've been together ever since, which is since 1974. I'd just like to say bon voyage, Revel. And don't come back enough. <laughs> no, we will catch up soon. Should send you around to see my parents. Bon voyage. Oh, okay. I remember the day you were born. I came into the Margaret Coles Hospital to see you, and your father was standing by the window because in those days babies were kept behind the windows. And he stood there and he said, This is my baby, isn't she beautiful? And there was this ugly baby. <laughs> No, he was pointing at the twins next door. <laughs> and they were Chinese. Oh, I see. No, 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 he wasn't. He wasn't. He was pointing at you and he said, this is my daughter and isn't she beautiful? And you were beautiful. Thing to say now, I have no, no, no other comments. I have no comment. All right. I remember going to see Marianne and Revel and Rachel was about six months old. And I remember Marianne lying on the floor and patting her tummy and telling me, I'm having another baby. And that baby was Giselle, who was born... How many months later? 13 months later. That's right. And I remember going to see Giselle at the hospital, except she'd already gone home. I turned up at the hospital <laughs> and they said, I was, I had to get on the tram and go back to their house in Hawthorne and visit them and there she was, a newborn baby and her baby sister Rachel who had gone to stay with Joanna while they had the baby, oh, do you remember that? Yeah. No, no, of course, I, I don't remember that. I was only one, but I remember staying at Joanna's place, and Joanna gave us a rabbit, and she called it Mary, and we were very excited, of course, because we were quite small. We had this little rabbit, and we were playing with it all day. Poor little thing. Imagine what it must have been like for a rabbit to be played with by maybe a three and four year old, and we decided to give it a bath, but. Um, no, no, it was still alive, but mind you, we couldn't find any water around, but they did have a full-sized swimming pool, which um, was quite handy for, you know, the amount of water that was in it, but luckily we didn't just dump the rabbit in the swimming pool. We very carefully got out a bucket of, only a bucket of water, and we washed the rabbit <laughs> in the bucket. Of water and the rabbit was making lots of interesting little <laughs> noises, which was um, <laughs> lots of little <laughs> noises, and um, obviously wasn't enjoying the bath very much. But we were quite intent on giving this poor little rabbit a good wash. But I don't remember it actually being dirty at the time. Um, and after that, we just we didn't have the rabbit anymore because, because it got all matted and. <laughs> yeah, and I remember that Joanna took the rabbit off us, and we never had it again after that. No, no, I 
I remember thinking it was a dessert. She ob- I can remember Not like now when we're big. It's good. That's right. And if the police come, tell the police that they've they're our plants and then everything will be all right. <laughs> we better cut that one. I don't think that's a good one to have. <laughs> <laughs> no, we always knew that that's what he was doing. I can always remember it. <laughs> you know, I remember another story. No, well, I don't know. I, what did you say? Come and look at my father's... No, 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 we never did. But the woman from across the road did. She said... Tell it, tell it. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm terribly sorry. The woman across the road said, Oi! To all of her friends. Oh, I'll tell you something pretty interesting about the people from across the road. Come and have a look at this. And she trooped across her little afternoon tea party of friends. Well, it must be very boring today at our house. Let's go and spice up the part. Come and have a look at the plants from across the road. And she brought them all into our backyard and they observed the um, horticultural experience and were very entertained. And of course, my parents were a bit annoyed about that. And um, that's how come I found out that they went across there. Did, they, did you take them up to the attic? No, we didn't have an attic. <laughs> where Rebel hid the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> a vacuum cleaner? <laughs> he didn't like Mary Ann vacuum cleaning, so he put it up in the attic, up in the roof. We had it. We had the ceiling, of yeah, course. No, no, I don't think so. It wasn't that big. No, he did put it. Would you like to be the microphone holder for a moment? Rachel, do you have? What are you talking about right now? No, Helen seems to think that we had an attic, and that's where Dad hid the vacuum cleaner. Hid the vacuum cleaner, Helen. Tell me more. We didn't actually have an attic, by the way. It was a fanatical house cleaner, and your father took wrong offence to this. This is completely what I've been wrong. Told I didn't witness this. Actually, and he got what? the vacuum cleaner and he shoved it up in the ceiling. Uh, I'll just clarify it. Mum spontaneously used to do some uh, house cleaning, but mostly she trained Rachel and I actually to uh, do the cleaning with a little list of chores from the age of after kindergarten, was it, Rachel? Yeah, it could have been, but I remember that we weren't allowed to watch television and remember one day Mum came home from work. She used to work a lot. Excuse me, I'd like to verify this. Marianne's children were not allowed to watch television. They were really restricted to television. One hour a day. She was such a bloody pain in the ass. No. <laughs> and uh, ABC too. One day we actually watched television all afternoon and we after school and we saw mum come in the driveway from home and we were like, oh my God, and we quickly turned off the television as mum's getting out of the car. She's getting out, she's opening the door, she's undoing the seatbelt and she's climbing out of the car. We've turned off the television. We're running around, we're hiding things under cushions, we're shoving dirt under the couch. We're just going wild in the cleaning up department and mum's walking towards the front door. We're running into the kitchen and we're doing the dishes and bowls are going, no, it wasn't that bad but anyway she came in and she went and she put her hand on top of the television (laughs) and she said oh I can tell you've been watching television but it's still warm (laughs) and by the way Peter we didn't have a television until we were what nine years old or something it is part of the story no the vacuum cleaner What Giselle said was true. She kept them so bloody 
closeted. They weren't allowed to watch television. They weren't allowed to do anything because they were going to be the perfect children. And they have grown up to be the perfect adults because they are just beautiful. Once again, once again we're beautiful. And everyone Except. No. no. <laughs> and everyone else can suffer because they're not quite as beautiful as us. It's hard to be Marianne is now Mars. Mars? Mars. 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 Yes, she's and she's involved into Mars. She's into Mars. And now her grandson can do everything. Well, the Easter egg story, when mum used to... Uh, every oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Um, it's not very interesting really, but um, mum gleefully tells the story about when uh, Rachel and I were quite young and everyone would everyone would everyone would give us easter eggs you know during easter and uh, she she we weren't allowed to eat chocolate oh you so she would guiltily list it's a true story it's a true story wouldn't wouldn't allow us to eat the chocolate so she would just gobble them up by herself exactly i used to bring you some easter eggs and Excuse me, I used to bring these babies Easter eggs and their mother would not let them eat them. She used to eat them herself. <laughs> uh, now I think mum should have a Yes, Marianne, we're really sorry. We're saying all of this and if you were here, you could defend yourself except you don't. Everything I'm saying is true, so you'll take my word for it. Won't you? I'm just listening to what she would be saying. She'd be going, Pamela, you're right. Because we're... She would. Marianne would say, shove it up your ass, Pamela. But we're very good friends and we... And you danced on the table together. The night I danced on the table at your mum's birthday party, the next day, John proposed to me. Do you believe that story? It's true. We were at your mother's... We did. We danced on the table and we kicked all the food off. And John and I went home and the next morning we woke up and John looked at me and he said, I think it's time we got married. And I said, why? And he said, because after last night, I think you need to be married. Oh. Can someone explain that? I don't understand it all as many years later. Get up the table now. He might divorce me. <laughs> I think it's John. John, can you get up the table? <laughs> Don't dance. Don't dance. No way. <laughs> do you remember that's when you proposed to Pamela? I do though. Yes. And the rule was you can have an hour of television. No. Nine. And he remembers every minute of it. What a liar. Liar, liar, pants liar. on fire. Yeah, liar, liar, pants on fire. Yeah. 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 Would you drink that drink? That's the drink of a liar. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Definitely. Get him on record there. Sit with Dan. Because Count Who would start. Uh, Doctor Who would start. Too scared when it's a cat. And you didn't buy me a glass of wine. Okay. Um, we watched The Goodies and Doctor Who. And remember that scary music? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Anyway, it was very scary, the music, and we used to, and Dad would be in the kitchen or something, and we'd go, Daddy, Daddy, you have to come and sit with us to watch Doctor Who, because that scary music is starting, and we'd all sit under the same blanket, because it was very cold, <laughs> and we'd have the little fire, had just been lit. It sounds like, oh, you're back in the old days. <laughs> we used to watch Doctor Who way back in the old she was in, in, in the 20th century. <laughs> A long time ago. And we'd all sit under the same blanket and watch Doctor Who because we couldn't watch it without our daddy because we'd be too scared otherwise. And then after that was Countdown and that was okay because occasionally you'd get to see Iggy Pop leaping all over the stage off his face. I remember when you used to come and see us, it would be like this big stork walking through the door. You seemed really tall. And you seemed more tall because you had all this hair hanging down off your face. <laughs> we didn't have that long beard. Remember that photo of you? Your big, big, long beard? 
and that made you seem more tall. And women, and women that hand. Okay. <laughs> Now, oh, okay. What will we ask you? Uh, no, 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 no. I don't want to hear a naughty story. The first story I would like to hear is what can you remember from when you were five years old? Well, I took my grandmother to the back door of our house and I had told the monsters that were outside there in the darkness to get back, get back. And she, I remember her face just lit up. She was enchanted. But why did you tell them to get back? Because I knew they weren't there and I had to get them out of the way in case she spotted me as being a liar. <laughs> so what you did was you told Nana that you had monsters at no, the back door. No, it wasn't door. Nana, it was my grandma. Oh, you told Nanny my that you had grandma. monsters? My grandma. Oh, grandma Eden. Yeah, 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 so you yeah, told Grandma right. Eden that you had monsters outside. Yeah. And, and she, she came out eagerly to look at them. And I said, get back, get back, as soon as I opened the door to show them to her. And she fell for it. And I thought, I want a winner here. I've tricked me grandmother. <laughs> Unbelievable. I know. You were quite injurious. I bought her a fan. That was several years later. Mm, I don't do anything to pick. Where did you get that from? A little shop in Turak Road. And what was it like when you went in the shop? What did the? How old were you when you bought the fan? About 12. And why did you choose the fan? Because it was an attractive item and there was Do nothing you, else to buy with the money I had, you know, I could see it was Snotty good. rags and old boxes or some sort of thing? Which would have done, you know, fan-shaped or box. an old granny who probably didn't know which side was up or down. She didn't know whether there was real <laughs> monsters. No, that's it. She could have pulled the there. wool over her eyes easy. That's it, that's it, that's it. <laughs> What so about, what do you, old. no, no, I want, now I want to hear about, what is your first memory from when you were 20? Oh, that would be my first fuck. Um, what about when you were, and now um, we'll cut to an egg break. <laughs> nice, um, anyway. That was a tasty one, wasn't it? No, it must be before that. I'll tell you what. No, no, what I want to know, <laughs> no, this is what I really... Afternoon, hang on, actually. hang on, Dad. <laughs> there was a few of them there. Hang on, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm quite curious. Giselle, what do you think about that? So what I want to know is what do you remember about after your first fuck, Dad? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what do you remember about oh, in, now directly we're afterwards? Oh, clinical. This is clinical. <laughs> Can't remember. Oh, See, just bloody typical, sale, isn't it? <laughs> Old men can't remember what happens after. <laughs> this is what happens. Went to sleep. That's oh, right. No, 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 no. <laughs> do, you, do you remember? <laughs> Can I ask a question, Dad? Yeah. Do you remember what what stage in the uh, sexual? Uh, what do you call it? History of whatever, you know, of your sexual history. What, My own sexuality. What, what number was Rachel? Do you remember, was she the 10th one? Ooh. Or? Ooh. <laughs> I think she was now. She come to me, she's a 10, yeah. The 10th one. Yep. I'm 10. I'm a 10. That's all. <laughs> they cleared up as long as we got that. interesting relationship. That is cleared up now, yeah. That we had with our father. What yeah. about... Um, well, now we've gone from sex. We should go. Do you remember your first uh, religious experience? No. I was oh, I do. I do. It was when I was on the bonnet of a car, uh, just a little way outside of Albury, with a rope around my neck, a noose around my neck, and the cowboys are saying, "If you don't kick off your shoes, we'll drive the car backwards. <laughs> That'll leave you hanging, dead." Well, I said to him. Oh, actually, I said to myself. Oh, I said to God. God, I said, if I... Yes, he said, help me. Yeah, please, please now. And I will go to church next Sunday. And you did if, if they please or will put the car back and let me stand up without a rope around my neck. And when I said this prayer, they all started laughing. <laughs> like it was a joke, you know. And they put the car back. I took the rope around me. I hopped down. It was like nothing ever happened at all. See? Go to church next Sunday. That's all we have to oh, say. I didn't say it to myself silently. I didn't say it to them. But said, they heard you though say it silently well, it to yourself. must have been, or maybe God, you could even say, God could have spake. 
to them and we said by the religiouses of their ear holes an interpreter. and saying let him go for the world awaits <laughs> or something like that don't get any tickets on yourself or anything no, you? no you don't want to do that no Right, now we have better have a more uh, conventional question. When was the first time you took acid, Dad? Uh, I was with this young lad over here, actually. Ah, this young lad this over one. this one. Yes. Is that when you tried to do backstroke up, up a gravel hill? No. I no, remember no, no, that. No, no, I remember Mum no, saying no. that once Dad um, became chemically altered on one occasion. And um, he decided that he should try and swim up a gravel hill. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't think we should dwell on these kind of things. No? Oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> Funnily enough, everything else is all right to talk about. I don't <laughs> understand why <laughs> any different. <laughs> Too right, Max. <Rachel. laughs> How about when was the first time that you decided that you would think that? Um, London would be a better place to live than Australia. Ah, when the girls started smiling at me before I smiled at them. He's a bit of a Casanova, actually. I don't believe it. They never smiled at me much down here, I'll tell you now. But when you walk... I can't believe it! Because he had leaves in his hair, leaves in his hair and, and living in an old... What was it? Car used to live in... <laughs> Leaves dirt, you know, yeah, we, probably went... They smile at you over there, straight in your face, smile, hello boy. That's a lovely thing, the way the girls in London smile at you, that's really... You lock on a couple of those little glances. Is it like, is it like this? I don't know. I don't or is it like this? It means different to me. <laughs> You're my daughter, how do I know what you look like? <laughs> I don't know, it's just teasing. Let's get someone else to do the, the, the look then. Okay, you try Helen, try, try the uh, come hither look. Do you like the hello, come hither look? Hang on. I don't know how to do it though. Train me a little bit. How do you do it? Yes! I was nearly there. I don't know how to do it. How do you do it? Just pretend. Danny, can you do it for Danny, you do it for What, what? Okay, Rev. Yes. <laughs> and smile. Oh. And smile as well. I'm so good. Oh, what are we doing? What are we doing? Just because I'm not a London poor, I don't go to the poor. Marjorie, your turn. Marjorie? Come, Marge. Yeah. Come here to look to Rev. Come here to look. What about the waitress? Yeah. Oh. That was a good one. <laughs> that was the best one so far. She didn't say goodbye. Oh, she's smoking. Okay. Well, well, well. Actually, what's your come here to look, Daddy? I don't. I, I'm just a lost boy. How can I? He's say a come lost here? boy. I'm just one of the last kids that just hang around out looking for something. What I do is I just I just do stupid things I can't I mean if they don't see it the first time I look at them I stab them in the heart or otherwise they just cut my throat. No, what actually happens is he acts completely silly and he um just you know what I just said that's tells them a bit of a story actually if I don't usually. Get them in the heart first glance, they will cut my throat. It's life and death with this love business. Love. Yeah. love? No, that's lust. Oh, is love. Dad, dad. Love. Anyone told you about lust? You know, the there's difference? difference. What's the difference? Like, you know, last night you said that you fell in love with Simon Watts' sister in law. That was actually lust, dad. Dad, no, that's no, lust. No, no, you can't no, fall no, in no, love no, with no. someone. But I knew, I knew I had so much to give this girl. Oh. More than oh. just. I think that's called no. boasting, dad. No, no, I mean, dad. she said, <laughs> how could there be so much knowledge? I thought, oh. God's sake, stop it with your woman. But that's what she said, something like that, you know. Peter oh, I Ab. thought pretty good, yeah, you know. Bang, bang. Yeah. So you would, wouldn't you? Clean up brains. <laughs> Have a little men, dribble. Uh, who make the greatest <laughs> success of their lives are uh, the ones who. Um, 
quintets. No? Wrong. Which ones are they then? The ones that were champion swimmers no, as children? No, quintets. No. Weird. No, make success. Wear tats. That's another one. Wear tats. That could be the ones you're talking well, about. The ones who wear tats. Yeah. Well, they might be. And then they wouldn't have to wear tats anymore. This seems like a futile effort, actually, uh, Peter. You know, maybe. She's got them. She's got them. Black hairs upon her bottom. Yeah, that song. I've seen them. I've seen them. I don't think we'll sing any more of that one. That was the Naughty Boys in Sydney in the old days. They used to do that. Do you remember the ne- the evening before your marriage, Helen? Helen. Do you remember when we went out to dinner together, you and I, before you were married? Which one? We had lots of dinners out. One in particular was just you and me. We went out together. You were getting married the next day or something. No. We went out after I was married. Before you married. Oh, yeah. And that funny man, his name was, um, he was a friend of Rosie, uh, Sturgis. Stephen? No. Bicycle over the farm. No, 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 when I first met you, it was at Aldous's place, out in the hills of Warrandyte. As far as I understood Warrandyte, I didn't realise that Warrandyte went on into actually becoming a river. With yeah. water in it. Well, I don't know. used to call that two stubbies travelling. That'd be about for the walkers. We're talking about a young hippie teenager. The, the dreams of uh, New Age. Oh, there were so still, many things going on there. What was the old New Age trip? I remember finding the house. I wasn't there. Through the guidance of the colour guy. That the the colour man. Yeah. yeah. It was also connected with Ziggy, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, John Wilson. The Matt John Wilson. Mm. And he knew all about colours. And now we've got things like Sheng Fui or Feng Shui or whatever. Loud shirts. Loud shirts. That's the uh, Japanese interpretation. Some of my friends in London call it vociferous shirt. I think it's very well chosen language. He calls himself Chelsea Cole. I'm just glad I've got a What's shirt. What's that here? There's a man pulling a face at me and indicating that I should leave the room. I hope I'll be returned very shortly. Goodbye, and I wish everybody the very best. Right, here we are now. It's a new kind of substance. I tell you one thing about life, I think it should be free. Here's the young lady we know from the past. I forget your name now, girl. It's a green no, 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 do everything for free. Everything you do is good, openly, and with pleasure. Knowledge of reggae. We're going to have a dance now called Dancing with Pamela. Oh, oh, are we just off? Nice oh, yes. Now we wait for the music to start. Oh, sorry, okay. Can dance. And we dance with Pamela and Helen. Where's Helen? And while yeah. this is beautiful, girls, this is luxury. Okay. You know what this is luxury? Okay. You know, or in Do my dream. Do I send a message to Joanna? Joanna. I love you, Joanna. Joanna and these loves women you, but we I love you now, too. They love me too. We love and you. Joanna, Joanna is friendly and she understands friendliness. And no. you understand friendliness. And I tell you, babies, it's been really nice to know you. All this time I've known you. I never had any oh. I never had no uh, shame about it. Hi, Joanna. Hi, who? Who? Joanna. Hi, Joanna. Hi, Joanna. And these girls, these are the business, these are the Australian women. Yeah. I don't know where they get them yeah. from, but they're good. I just I'm leaving never, now. I never knew Goodbye. how to talk to them when I was here, you know, but apparently I must have picked up a name when I was away. Yeah, that's right. But it must have just come from talking to you, baby. That's the only way. Because after that, I mean, I didn't know how He's to coming talk home. before I was talking to you. So tell them that you love her. I love ya. Joanna. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Turek Road? Oh, oh, oh. Turek Road. Naughty, they're worried me out, but I like that. Yes, I do. Oh, you like just bumping the hips. So, we're going to change it now. We're going to actually meet the early stuff. Low, slowly, slowly. You've never actually met each other there. You're into the old bathroom in the old disaster. I called them there, one night. Yeah. From that den of iniquity and drugs. Love it, love it. I didn't know, I just called in. Oh, well. You didn't know, I did. 
half of winter. I don't know. We've always been in the same place. Two at road. Two at road. Woohoo! Two at road. Get a little bit of a fair bit. <laughs> pull the plug, Harry. Yeah, pull the plug, Harry. We're getting bored of it, Harry. Yeah. All we need is a bit of a break, you know, branch out, and you know, you know ourselves, we have to try and pretend Let's something. Let's get 10% of this movie. We'll get 10%, don't worry about the percentages, mate. This is one, you stick to the mates, you mates, you you mates you mate. you you The old sister-in-law, the old sister-in-law, she says, uh, the other girl there close to me, she says, what are you going to do when you die? If she doesn't put a shirt on, I'm going to stick my hand down the front of her dress. Anyway, um, I said, well, I'll just wait till I'm very sick and I'll just row out on a small dinghy and jump right down, find a giant octopus and jump right down his neck. And after that, she didn't ask me anything about what was going to happen in the future. What are the words? Who was describing this wicked thing? With a man who's got a huge dick and a huge scrotum and he that's all these tricks with his balls sure. and his dick. So, oh, no. This is Maybe. Simon Watt. I saw him last night. All right. Tell me all this stuff. Very peculiar. Good. Uh, I'll tell you what. Simon Watt has got a I saw that wife with a younger sister who speaks Japanese. And have you ever had a young white woman speak Japanese to you with a proper Japanese twang? Not often. Bloody interesting. These things, of course, can be forgotten. When we think of winning horses. Europe, for instance, places like that. Vast reservoirs of beauty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We smoke it, don't we? We don't push anything down anybody's throat. We don't enough to say, make me vomit, and I don't want to. I no, think this man behind the camera was the first man ever tr tricked me into smoking this kind of thing. I'm not really sure if that was the case, but I think he was close to the job. Anyway, I just started laughing like the rest of them. They were all laughing. Danny Curie was a nice man. Black hair, he had vibrant black hair, and he had a very funny girlfriend. His name was Eric Mark. We're worried about the noise of the uh, guys driving around with loud music Wait. in their cars. On the grass. And they can't hear anything going on. And they get up and they have deaf ears. They go to deaf places. No, with, um, deaf places. Yeah, they get up and they have deaf ears. They go to deaf places with deaf people. So they go, what? They go, what? Uh, you know what I mean? You know what it is? Boys and I think we should stop this yeah. in our municipality. Especially wearing hey, this on his shirt. Just one of these sort of people. I didn't tell anybody else. I mean, I don't know about you, Peter, but... Uh, I'm talking to you. Okay. Right. I'm not allowed to tell people. Well, you can do what you like. All right, I won't tell him what you like. Oh, he knows that. Of course he does. That's his kinship. Don't even... Me. That, that, not even worth mentioning. For what? God's sake, woman. Oh, dear. I think it's funny. Of course it's funny. Request live now. Ain't live funny. funny. He's fun. I think it's fun myself. I'll get a lot of enjoyment out of it. This is Cross Live to the Olympics in uh, a small flat in uh, Old Main. Thanks, man. What we reckon is we should legalise it and give the sole growing rights to the Aboriginals. Yeah. Because I think we so. think we do own the Aboriginals. And I've said to David White already, and that can, he will not deny this. Who's David White? Yeah, well, he's uh, some man uh, in the state of Victoria. It's about the year 2000. David White was a Labour Party man some years ago. Uh, I believe so. When was the last time you went to a party without a camera She had black hair like you do yourself, oh. Helen. I've always been Cut. very partial to black hair. I don't know what it is. So you must have done my foolish behaviour. It's my hair. It must be your hair, you see. Has Joanne got brown hair? She's got black hair. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You got a photo? No. So what do you do when you're I don't have photos. So I've got a camera. I've got one of those type of photo type of people. Haven't you got a photo in your wallet? I've got a photo on my head. Oh, I can't see that. Oh. 
This is the best photo. Get a photo of this. Okay. Yes. Actually, it is a great shot of that cat. I like the one you took, actually. I was just telling Giselle, we've got photos of Rosalind that I'll Photos of, uh, what was her name again? Rosalind. I remember that name. We've got photos oh, of her father. in her 70s gear. Well, we can give her one of them. My son yesterday asked me, have you still got that drawing that you did of the house? I was like, what? 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 <laughs> what? It's the old house in Hawthorne. Oh, have you got it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. That was amazing. Yeah, he's 10. Mm. Was that the old flat in Hawthorne? No. Show us your songs. Penny Hotel. That'd be alright, show us that. That's it, that's shot. Very interesting. Uh, where are yours, John? One, three. Oh yeah, we're going to look at a couple of socks. I'm going to pull them up now here. Yeah, well, yeah. He's got the usual type of socks as well. Yeah. Now what I guess we can say from this, ladies and gentlemen, is we should always, in case someone's got a camera on us. That's true. Good point. Good point. Is this the song you were mentioning earlier, Peter? Is this it? No, no, not, this isn't a little wing. It's a Stuart no. Hendrix song. Hey? Festival Hall. Hey, it is a bit like Festival Hall. Oh, yeah. It is Festival Hall, isn't it? I think so. It's the Festival Hall we should have had. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Fuck Festival Hall. Tough card. It's been there for how long? Since it's we've been around. Oh, hey. They can never pull it down. Whenever there's a flood, like a, a decent downfall, there's always cars. They get stuck under that bridge. And nobody does anything about it. <laughs> like, I was the guy driving under that bridge that day, you know? <laughs> I love that place. I don't think they should ever change it. No! Never! Leave it as it is. Never! Yeah. No, they will leave it. It's an, yeah, it's an institution. Nobody dies. They always have fun. Oh, no. There are pictures to send on front pages around the world. They're reporting it from Melbourne. <laughs> Uh, tonight we crossed live to Dudley Street Bridge. There are apparently some cars stuck under there. We crossed. Uh, cut. Cut. Oops. Why am I saying anything? Oh yeah, oh Where well. Inspector, though. Thank you. No, thanks. I'm right. My line. No. I'm right, really. Right. Thanks, darling. Up above it and there down below. So all along the line I go, straight as an arrow in an aeroplane. Flying through the rain, but I never have no sad old time like. 
must learn to drink. Yeah. Didn't you tell me you thought you'd just learn? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still learning. That's right. <laughs>